Hello again, here is a quick video with a new solution to a not so common problem which failed, but I want to share it nevertheless because I found it quite interesting. I was browsing eBay the other day when suddenly I found a device which I've been craving for a long time without even knowing. Oh yeah! It's one of those electromagnetic seven segment displays which were used at the gas stations to display the price for the last couple of decades, at least in Germany that is. And I really wonder why these aren't sold more often because everywhere you look you see them replaced with new LED displays nowadays. Anyway, as soon as I saw that thing on eBay I knew I had to make a clock out of that. Here's the circuit board with the digits still in place. And immediately you can see another very cool feature of these digits. They don't need supply voltage. You can just shut off the power and they will still display what you set. So when you are making a clock with these, you only need a short current burst, maybe a centisecond every one minute. And then it doesn't need anything at all for 59 seconds and 99 centiseconds. And that might be why there are so many electrolytics on this board. To avoid power shortages they can just stockpile a little bit of power for every single digit. I desoldered them with this hot air gun which got way too hot, but I didn't have anything better at the time. I raised the PCB with some screws and then the digits dropped out on the table. One digit didn't take the heat so well and kind of melted away, so I sacrificed that one to take a little look inside. Basically there is a magnet attached to every single segment and a coil underneath to flip the segments according to the voltage polarity applied to the coil. I analyzed the whole pattern with this very powerful image analysis tool called ImageJ and then I transferred the coordinates of the hole into a new eagle part. Then I put four of those parts in a new schematic and connected them in a matrix. That can easily be boarded on a double-sided board with long horizontal lines on one side and the rest on the other. As always I thought I was smarter than the original designers. So I started to make my own controller board without even having a second glance at the circuit I salvaged the digits from. I wanted to use L293 Quad H bridge drivers because I had some of those left from another step up project. And that would really have been an elegant solution because for driving a row or a column of segments you only need half an H bridge. So only three L293 ICs would have been enough. To drive those and to keep time I wanted to use the cheapest AVR microprocessor available. And that worked a treat for one segment. Even with a very low voltage of a little above 5 volts. But as soon as I connected all four digits it was clear that there is more to it. The overly complicated design of the original PCB seems to be there not just to fill the empty space after all. Who would have thought? There are internal freewheeling diodes in the L293 ICs, so voltage spikes from the inductive loads are probably not the problem here. Instead this is what I think. If I want to flip the A segment of the first digit for example, I have to put a positive voltage to the A segments of all four digits and a negative voltage to all segments of the first digit. That will magnetize the A1 coil, no doubt. That's why driving one segment only works just fine. But all the other coils have a very very low impedance. Because of that the positive voltage can quickly sneak through all the other A segments and uncontrollably spread through the whole circuit. 
that's why other segments are being turned to and that's why all the effort has to be done to control the digits individually. I report back as soon as I succeed. See you later.